Hello and welcome back to, I think, my favorite part of cellular respiration. This is when everything comes to a close and it's a bang of a close because this is when we get to make all the energy our cell so desperately needs to keep doing its job. And this last phase of cellular respiration is oxidative phosphorylation. Just the words oxidative and phosphorylation. Um, uh, like when it's oxidative, uh, there's electrons involved. Phosphorylation, we're phosphorylating, so we're making ATP at this point. And um, if, you, if you think of all the different phases, we had glucose, or I'm sorry, glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and now we're finally here. So far, if we're keeping a tally of what we've done so far with gl glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, these are the guys we care about so far. These two especially, NADH and FADH2, these are our electron carriers. They're each holding two electrons, and those electrons are going to help us make a lot of energy. Those protons, those 10 protons, are also going to help us make some energy. So let's put a little bit of definitions on what oxidative phosphorylation is. Oxidative phosphorylation is actually a two-step process. It involves um, something called an electron transport chain, and then lastly, it involves something called chemiosmosis. We're going to go into both of those because they're both distinct, but they're dependent upon each other. So, let's write this out. Here we go. So, oxidative phosphorylation. This involves the electron transport chain. And something called chemiosmosis. So, remember that word osmosis? from our days in water and cell um, membranes. Um, now we're putting the word chemi in front of it, so it's chemical osmosis. So it's a little bit different, but same thought there. So electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. Both of these things are occurring in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So far we've worked in the cytosol for glycolysis, We've worked in the matrix for the citric acid cycle, and now all of the stuff that we need to feed into um, uh, oxidative phosphorylation is residing inside the matrix of the mitochondria. So the matrix is surrounded by the inner membrane, so it can see the inner membrane, it, it's, it's fine. So this occurs in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Once again, we gotta do some drawings here so we can explain what's happening here. And I'm gonna start off by doing the electron transport chain. I'll do all of it, but um, uh, they do go hand in hand. Let me give a quick description for the electron transport chain and then uh, um, uh, and I'll do a quick description for coming osmosis as well. But first we need to draw it out so you can actually see what the description is gonna be. So I'm just gonna erase all this and we're gonna get into the mitochondria. So first, we need to talk about the electron transport chain. Because the electron transport chain will help us understand how chemiosmosis works. So within the mitochondria, I'm just gonna make a tiny little mitochondria here, and a little inner membrane like so, inside. I'm not, I'll be good. I'll make it a little bit better than that. So here's my mitochondria. There we go. There's tons of surface area on the inner membrane. And what the electron transport chain entails, it's a protein complex made of four different proteins that are embedded within the inner membrane. So I'm gonna take a little portion of the inner membrane and I'm gonna blow it up and do like a enhance and zoom for you. So I'm gonna take this portion right all different color here so you can see it. I'm going to take this portion right here and we're going to blow it up for you right there. So knowing that this little portion that I'm showing you in detail is actually copied over and over and over and over again within the inner membrane. There's so much surface area that these reactions are happening constantly within the mitochondria. It's not in just that one spot. This is actually copied over and over again. So Remember, the inner membrane is a lipid bilayer, so I'm just gonna draw the two lines to signify 
the lipid bilayer there. So here we go. So here, and I'm gonna keep some space on that side of the membrane because I'll need that for later. Just a little preview. So here's my lipid bilayer. And if I'm looking at this orientation here, this bottom part is the matrix. This whole thing is my inner membrane. And out here is my inner membrane space. Okay, so now hopefully you have your orientation. So now we've got to draw the proteins that are involved in the electron transport chain. It's a series of four proteins, and each of these proteins, this is what makes up the slide. So remember how the electron carriers at, um, at NADH and FADH2, they're holding their children, the electrons. They've been climbing up the ladder this whole entire time, and now they've reached the slide. This is where the slide is. They're gonna release their electrons down the slide. But the slide isn't a deep drop. It's a very gradual fall because the more you let that fall happen gradually, the energy gets released in a slower fashion. You don't just go boom, release all the energy and you can't capture it all. If you can release it slowly in a stepwise manner, you actually can capture that energy over time. So it'd be a difference between a complete steep you know, slide, if you've ever been on a slide like that, like at a water park, those are scary. It's boom, done. As opposed to those long carnival slides where you're in a potato sack. Have you ever done that? <laughs> those like the fun lasts a little bit longer. So it depends um, on your personal part. Do you like it, you know, a fast drop or a slower drop? Electrons like a slower drop. They like to let their energy out slowly. So the way these, uh, this protein complex is shaped or formed or arranged, I should say, inside the inner membrane, these four proteins are doing their job. And this is kind of, we like to use these kinds of shapes to signify these proteins inside the cell, inside the inner membrane specifically. Do, do, do. I've seen it like these shapes multiple times in textbooks. So I'm just giving you what I've seen. All right. So you have protein complex one, two, three, and four. So you have these four protein complexes. And sometimes you have these other prosthetic proteins that are just kind of residing in there as well, but they're part of the complex. They're just not labeled with them. So here's the story you need to know. So here's the slide. Here's what's going on. NADH and FADH2 are hanging out in the matrix. So hanging out in the matrix, you have NADH and you have FADH2 hanging out in the matrix. You also have tons of protons hanging out in the matrix because all those protons that were made during the citric acid cycle and glycolysis they all get shuttled into the matrix. The other thing that's hanging out in the matrix, which we haven't talked about yet, is oxygen. So now oxygen finally comes into play. I'm gonna put O2 over here. So there's lots of O2 just hanging out in the, all in the matrix. And now, if you remember back in chemistry, and even back in um, unit one and stuff, we talked about electronegativity. That is an atom's desire to pull electrons closer to itself. So remember how water had that special electronegativity where oxygen's electronegativity was so great it would actually pull hydrogen's electrons closer to itself, so it had that partial negative charge attached to it? That's electronegativity. So the whole goal of the electron transport chain is to make water. You're like, what about the energy? Wait for it, it's coming. Not yet. First, we gotta do this part, and then you'll see how it feeds into the energy side of it. So the whole point of the electron transport chain is to get those electrons flowing through the electron transport chain so we make water. And oxygen has a high electronegativity. So as those electrons are getting dropped off at the slide, 
they're going to literally get pulled to the bottom of the slide by oxygen's electronegativity. Oxygen's like, please come, I, I want you here. So that would be the equivalent of another, it's a, another electron acceptor, if you will. So if it's accepting electrons, there's your redox reaction right there. That's what we were talking about earlier. So electrons are going straight to oxygen. So here's how the slide works, the electron transport chain. I should actually call it what it really is, <laughs> so the electron transport chain. NADH is hanging out in the matrix. It sees protein complex one. This is its slide. So if you, if you were thinking about um, different heights or different ladder heights, protein complex one is here, protein complex two is here. Um, protein complex one has a longer slide than protein complex two, but they're still pretty good slides. And NADH comes along, drops its two electrons off on the slide, and comes back out, and NADH has now become NAD+. We know NAD+. NAD+, is going to go back to glycolysis, to the citric acid cycle, scoop up a couple other electrons, and become NADH again, and this whole thing keeps on going. So these two electrons get dropped off by NADH. This is where it gets dropped off. FADH2 says, I like protein complex 2, so I'm going to drop my two electrons off at protein complex 2, and it's going to come back out as FAD. Okay, so now these electron carriers have now become electron acceptors again. They're going to go back to the matrix. They're in the matrix. They're going to go back to citric acid cycle, go to glycolysis, do their job again. So they just keep on being used. It's perfectly, they just recycle it themselves all the time. So now these two electrons are on the slide and oxygen if oxygen is there if you're breathing and you're doing well and you're even when you're exercising if you're able to take in enough oxygen you can do this if you're not taking in enough oxygen none of this is going to happen this is when you start making cramps and lactic acid and all that kind of stuff that's what we call fermentation you don't want that um, but this is good because your cells are making energy when this is happening so if oxygen is present these electrons are going to go down the slide. So both of these I like to travel in little pairs. They're going to go down the slide. It's going to trace it down. And then they're going to come out the slide. And you're going to get these two electrons over here. So it's like two and two. And there's just constantly this stream of electrons that are happening here. These electrons are going to latch on to some protons to become H's, right, and some oxygen to create water. So at the end of this, these electrons are going to grab on to an oxygen, they're going to grab on to protons, and they're eventually going to make water. So you're like, wait a second, Ox water only has one oxygen. These O2s actually get split into an O, so half an O2 would be an oxygen, one oxygen. These two electrons go to two protons. We're going to get two of them, neutralize them, boom, boom, done. You're going to get some water. So the point of the electron transport chain, let's write this out here. So if this is underneath your um, uh, notes for uh, oxidative phosphorylation, I would say number one, electron transport chain. Here's what you would do, little a. So NADH and FADH2 drop their electrons off at protein complex one and two, respectively. So NADH the electrons travel through the electron transport chain, exit protein complex 4, and end up binding with a hydrogen and an oxygen to create water. Electrons travel through chain, exit protein
protein complex four. Now this is just constantly happening, but we know for one molecule of glucose that we originally started with, you're going to make six waters at the end. So that's just for one molecule of glucose. Okay. That is an electron transport chain. I'm going to stop here because I want to make sure my video doesn't run out, and I do apologize on that last, um, back in the day when I did the... Um, the enzyme one, it did cut off, but you got everything you needed to know. But um, I'm going to stop here so I don't accidentally go over my time limit on my video. I'm going to leave this up, and we're going to pick it up to the, for the second part of oxidative phosphorylation, which is chemiosmosis. And this is where we finally get to make tons and tons of energy so your cells can thrive. Come back. We'll see you soon for chemiosmosis.